it in all of plus plus uh, simulations. Uh, I don't plan to uh, give the whole presentation that I will give tomorrow anyway to everyone. So let's just start by doing a little demonstration. Uh, I will uh, still show you just the basics of what to expect in, in terms of this topic. So uh, in general, we have added uh, two new NED functions. Uh, this one is PyEval and PyCode. These uh, run uh, Python uh, code. Basically, the first one uh, evaluates just one expression, and the second one runs a block of code uh, and then can return value. Uh, I will talk about uh, tomorrow about CPPYY, which is the tool that makes all this possible. And uh, the second major thing that we are adding is the ability to define simple module behavior in Python. Uh, so just uh, some examples for the first uh, topic about the new net functions. Um, both of them take a string as a first argument. And PyEval simply evaluates the Python expression and uh, returns the uh, value of the Python expression. And PyCode can be used uh, to run a bigger block of code with uh, control structures and, and variable definitions and uh, so forth. Uh, both of them can take additional named uh, uh, arguments. Uh, did a syntax that is similar to the, the lambda syntax in Python. You can simply um, add a parameter list uh, before the expression or the block of code, and, and uh, the rest of the NED function parameters will be passed into the Python code uh, and refer to them using these names. Uh, and about the second topic, uh, the implementation of simple model logic in uh, Python, uh, I have an example of that too. Uh, basically, in NED, we already have the class uh, model property, which can be used to uh, specify which C++ class implements the behavior of the given simple module. Now we are adding Python class. This has uh, three different forms. I will explain them in detail tomorrow. And uh, to implement the actual behavior, this is all the code that is needed. Basically, you have to uh, import uh, the omnipotent.runtime uh, module and uh, make a Python subclass of the simple C simple module uh, on the PP class, just as you would in C++. And you can add your uh, method overrides uh, in Python, basically the, the usual initialize stage. Uh, you can access the uh, usual classes that you, you are working with in on the P++ uh, from Python, like C message, you can uh, use the usual uh, methods to schedule messages, to send messages, to access parameters. Uh, and basically, all of this just works, as you would expect, almost magically. Um, I think that's mostly the introduction. Uh, and now comes the conversation part. Who's interested in, in which new feature in more detail? So, uh, Atla, I, ju I just want to understand what you so uh, basically. So, the initialize and, and uh, uh, the handle message are all written in Python, 
right? Yes, yes. And I, I can also show you a working demo. Uh, yes, but uh, mm -hmm. please continue. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. I don't know how many more people we can let in. We are already like, 13, but three of three of that is just us, uh, the So one working example is uh, the FIFO uh, sample. We have ported the entire uh, FIFO or FIFO uh, sample to Python. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with uh, it. This is one of the classic uh, sample simulations that we are uh, including in Omnet++. And uh, just as in the example, this is uh, almost a direct uh, port of, of the existing C++ code. I can even show them uh, side by side. That might be more interesting. Uh, so the original C++ code was, um, first of all, it was two files. One was the uh, header and uh, the other the uh, implementation, which is like the usual C++ layout. But uh, in Python, there is no need for that. Uh, we could simply uh, implement this entire abstract, <coughs> abstract FIFO class uh, uh, as a subclass of C, simple module as usual. And uh, Directly do the same things as we as we did in C plus uh, plus. The members have to be instantiated manually in Python, of course. That we, we have here, like the queue member, we can declare it in C plus plus just like this. In, in Python, we have to add those in the, in the initializer. But the 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 behavior itself, like the the body of the initialize uh, method is almost one by one the same without all the the uh, inconvenience of, of C++, like manual memory management and and buffer overflows. And, and we, we all know all of how, how, how C++ is. Mm. And I can start this example, and it looks and behaves just as the this plus plus uh, sample did. We have the same configurations, and the, all of these these modules are implemented in Python, and they just do what they do. The source sends out messages periodically. FIFOs queue them; they have a certain length, and they release. Um, Message periodically, and the thing just gets rid of them. And this, this is this is the Python code running within those modules. The FIFO class itself is is really simple. It uh, simply uh, uh, overrides the start and end service uh, methods of the abstract FIFO, which itself defines the the FIFO behavior. Um, The same way as it did in C++. Okay, good. Thanks. So, uh, just a final. So, in terms of uh, running the, uh, say, I, I don't know whether it's, it's the right way to ask it. Also, does it create a, a kind of a Operating system specific binary to run that, or, or how, how does that work? No, uh, I am running uh, simply the, the OPP run binary, uh -huh. uh, which is uh, the this is like an empty anti simulation binary that itself has no model specific code in it. This is the same uh, executable that we use to, for example, run INET. Because INET is built as a separate shared library, and and this executable simply loads INET and then mm -hmm. runs its native code. Yeah, here uh, because we don't have any custom native code in the model, we can also just use the open 
the debug version or the release version of, uh, of Opera, and it will uh, load the, the Python uh, classes and, and execute them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course, if, if you also have some native parts in your model and you want to, to extend uh, some parts in Python, there is no uh, issue with that as well. You can uh, still load these kinds of uh, Python simple modules into uh, your models built as uh, executables. Okay, Adler, thanks. Okay. Um. Um, I don't know if this goes too far, but uh, is it uh, would it be possible to like um, interrupt the simulation from the outside using Python methods or whatever, and like control what happens in the yes. simulation with Python? This is exactly one of the use cases that we had in mind. Uh, some kind of, uh, well, in INET we call it the scenario manager, and uh, that uh, has some behavior that can be, be specified in an XML file, and it has some pieces of fixed functionality where it can like enable and disable uh, connections, add and remove modules, uh, and the simulation, observe some uh, results. And uh, I think, uh, I don't know if you were there, uh, Andras will uh, give some of these uh, more concrete use cases. Uh, I'm mostly uh, talking about the technical details and the, all the kinds of usages, but uh, yes, uh, Exactly because the uh, this kind of the, uh, use case like with the scenario manager, it's a bit more difficult to do uh, in C++ because either you have to like code up a custom C++ module for that specific simulation that you want to do, or make a generic enough implementation like the one in INET, which can do some things from XML, but that's also not the most convenient. So. Uh, this way, you can, uh, without problems, uh, add a simple module written in Python. And for example, if you uh, raise an end simulation uh, exception, uh, that will act as you would expect. It will end the simulation uh, whenever and uh, so, uh, on, on on whichever condition, like stop condition that you you want to, to end it on. So basically, we uh, wanted to make it a lot more uh, a lot easier and more convenient to uh, add many of these one-off kinds of behaviors that uh, you could also already do in C plus plus, but that is not the most convenient for like quick prototyping because you have to build it and you have to debug it. Uh, with Python, you just save the file and run it again, and it will build a new behavior, of course. And of course, it's also, we think, a lot easier for uh, teaching purposes. Because for, for beginners, uh, we always thought, at least I, I uh, thought uh, C++ as a kind of an obstacle if, if someone's entirely new in the field and then an experienced programmer. Uh, anyone else? Do, do you perhaps have any like ideas in mind as to what, what uh, you would uh, want to use something like this for either the new net functions that evaluate Python code or the some, some module that you you wanted to implement, but thought that uh, or how much easier it would be if I could quickly call it up in Python, maybe. Yeah, it, I mean, um, so we we kind of in our teaching we use uh, Omnet as as our 
uh, when we teach discrete event simulators so one of the main things is kind of you know the c++ <laughs> problem of, of all these pointers you know using deallocated memory all these uh, so this is something that you know we would like to also consider so i mean at the moment we already have set up our course and so on it's it's running already so probably this would be a good because they, this is kind of the main main pitfall <laughs> with c++ where students have a lot of problems uh, uh, using c++ exactly yes so, this is uh, one of many pieces of feedback that we uh, mm. took into account when making this yeah mm. Uh, sorry, uh, maybe I missed this um, somewhere in the beginning uh, because I yeah, jo joined um, uh, the, the part uh, with the practical compar uh, uh, comparison between C++ and yes. Python code, but uh, so th there's no or like minimal performance uh, impact of using this kind of uh, Python-based class classes? Excuse me, the performance impact? Yeah. Oh, there definitely is. Yes, we all know that Python is not a fast language by any means. And it is supposed to be used uh, only where it's not critical. Mm. Uh, okay. um, so yes, that is that is the cost of mm -hmm. the, your development. Mm. Um, I wonder also how easy it is to, uh, for example, if I want to prototype something between Python, to then like uh, translate it back into C plus plus version. <laughs> Probably not as easy as translating from C plus plus to Python. I would say it's almost easier. Uh, uh, at least there are uh, projects that uh, not quite, mm -hmm. but almost uh, embed part of the Python interpreter into your uh, program, which then technically becomes a native code, except it still does the exact same thing that the Python interpreter did when it run your code. So that's not really happening. Uh, but for proper conversion, um, well, I don't think this came up yet, actually. But for now, it would have to be done manually. Um, mm -hmm. Later, well, it could be difficult to automate it, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah, what I also wondered, so I think uh, there are some like use cases uh, also from our institute where uh, people were using um, some like machine learning on top of or during the simulation for the reinforcement learning. And then probably it's also easier then to, to load those Python libraries if you have Python classes as well. Right? Definitely, yes. That is all, uh, another uh, um, advantage of this that I, I always think of Python as a a, a universal glue language, which may be slow, but at least you can interface with almost anything in mm -hmm. Python. So yes, it, uh, it's definitely a lot easier to, to use either machine learning or, or, or any kinds mm -hmm. of uh, libraries that you are interested in in your models by using this glue language in the middle, if it's, if it's uh, available. A and it's not already easy to use from C, C++, but sometimes it's it's still easier to integrate through Python than mm -hmm. natively because there's like build system problems and and also with the native integration. Yeah, no, what I would also imagine, um, or at least um, I would definitely benefit uh, myself if I had this um, opportunity of like just uh, logging or visualizing some data uh, during the simulation without uh, <laughs> basically building this block in advance and uh, somewhere in some module. Yeah. Yes, that's mm -hmm. also possible, I suppose. Yeah, cool, thanks. And uh, of course, this uh, this is like the third or fourth iteration of this same idea of, of Python super modules. Uh, there's another presentation tomorrow from Marcus Montanesi, who uh, does something very similar. It was based off of the previous iteration, which did not use the uh, dynamic binding generator, CPPYY, 
and there's a reason why we, we, we are keep we, we keep trying with this because we definitely see the, the advantages and um, yeah. Gabor had just texted me a project that is an experimental compiler that can translate Python into C++. Well, uh, let me. Um, let me try to bring it up. Yes, I, I have not tried this yet. Well, if, if it really works, well, it's not for Python 3, so that's a definite disadvantage. But I guess there are several similar projects for Python 3 as well, but we just haven't looked for them yet. Uh, just another uh, piece of information that it's also possible to extend existing native C++ simple module implementations, at least ones that are prepared for it, uh, by subclassing from those, not directly from C simple module, and only override overriding one or two methods in them. So for example, in INET, there are dozens of, of uh, more or less complicated uh, simple modules, and it's probably uh, not too complicated, or, or, or uh, you could probably already find some that could be modified just by uh, overloading one or two methods on it. And now you can do that too from Python. So you don't have to uh, implement the entire simple module logic in Python. You can just uh, add some pieces in some places where you, where you want higher configurability, but performance is not critical. Um, I don't know if, if, if anyone else has any more questions or ideas. Uh, uh, at least instead of the silence, I could maybe mention uh, how and where we look for the Python implementation classes. Uh, it's, uh, as I mentioned, uh, declared by the Python class. Uh, module property. Uh, let me find the NED file. Yes, here it is. So uh, this Python class property means that uh, the runtime will try to find a Python class to load and instantiate for the behavior of this single module instead of a C++ class, as it was default until now. And yeah, before it's still that, but the only option. Now, if you add this Python class uh, property, then if you don't add any parameters, then uh, you will try to find a pi file. I don't know if it's that uh, legal, maybe I guess. Pi file uh, right next to the NED file uh, with the declaration with the same name, but different uh, extension. And we'll, we'll look within that Python file, look for a, a Python class with the same name as the simple module type name. So here, because I don't have any parameters for the property, it will find the FIFO.py and within the that the FIFO class. If I add an optional parameter here, then I can Specify that instead of this name, let's look for a class with this name. And now, if I want to start it, it won't work because it won't find the Python class exactly. Cannot instantiate Python class. If I change the class name to pi 54 
and it will work again. Like that. And the third option is if I add a fully qualified uh, class name like this, then mm -hmm. we will look for the Firefox class within this uh, module. And uh, this module can be anywhere within the Python class. And to make it easier, we are also adding the net pass entries to the Python pass. So you could, uh, for example, make a module folder here. Uh, no, sorry. That's still the part of the fully qualified name without a folder. So I, I should create a module Python file, yes. And then within it, I could be IP for class. So just that, 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 that's about this. And I think we are already out of time.